Hello friends, I'm Scott with Paws Work Holding. I have Eric with me today and we are on the floor at Montague Manufacturing and the plan for today is to install our hydraulic package, our hydraulic infrastructure onto a brand new brother R450 Speedio machine. Um, our plan is to put multiple part fixtures on the machine clamping with hydraulics and we have created a pump package uh, to install dual acting hydraulics onto a, a CNC machine that allows for uh, M code activation, pressure detection, and we're going to go through our package and how we install it on the machine. And hopefully, you'll be able to see how it's done, and uh, it will help you see what we're doing here at Montague Manufacturing. Let's get started. All right, Eric, show me what hardware we got here to do this hydraulic installation on this machine. Okay, so we have our electrical package here. Yep. It has wire leads that tie into your directional valves. Yep. Which tie into a, a pressure sensor, so it'll, it'll detect if you have any failures, uh, whether your pressure is not high enough, that yep. sort of that sort of thing. Yeah. Which is tied into a GX40 pump. After the GX40 pump, it goes into these rubber lines that run down into the machine tie into a hard plumbing yep that ties into a rotary union okay and then we have hard plumb out of the road hard plumb out of the rotary union to these uh these blocks here yep and then you put a gauge on it so yep. you use, uh, can see what pressures you have on on your fixturing yep we run, we run them into another rubber lines here and so it's flexible and you can hook them into fourth axis or flat work or whatever fixturing you would need. So basically you have one line coming in as pressure. And, and one line going out at, as a return or a tank line. Gotcha, and you got, so two lines on each pallet. Yes, yes. I got it. Let's take a look at the machine and see uh, what that looks like. Okay. So where do you generally put the pump, Eric, when you uh, install them onto the machine? So I like to put these pumps on the backs of the machine on top of the electrical box. So okay. they're not on the floor leaking all over the place, being nasty, uh, which we don't have issues with that anyway. Uh, it makes it easier to hook the electrical package on. Yep. So I can I can mount that on the outside here. Yep. And then run it down, the power leads down on, down and into the inside so we can hook the, it makes it easier to hook up in here. Um, after that, we run all of the hydraulics across the top of the machine yep. and then down. Okay, gotcha. So why don't we take a look at how you're hooking up the electrical box to the pump and then how you're hooking that into the machine. Okay. You want to kill the power to this thing, Todd? All right, Eric, so we have the gray cable coming out of our magical blue power box here. Uh, that gray cable's been run into the control panel back here. It's got nine wires in it. One of them is a ground wire. So you've got eight other wire leads. Why don't you explain to us what those other eight wire leads are and, and what we're hooking them to back here in the back of the machine? Okay, so you have two, two wire leads here um, they plug into the 208 power yep. of the machine. Okay. These will go back up to the box and into a power source that'll reduce it down to 24 volt. The machine is uh, only is required to run off 24 volt. You put any more than that in, you could burn out a board or a circuit. Gotcha. So after that one, you got these two here that I'm gonna plug into uh, IO24. 
yep. an IOG. Yep. So it requires a 24 volt from the machine to run the back side of my relays. Okay. okay. Up here we got inputs and outputs. Okay. The two bottom are for your directional valves. Yeah. Um, this is what the M code is going to actually, this is how it's going to tell the M code to turn on and off or which one to turn on and off. Yep. And then the next ones up here are for your, uh, for your pressure switches. Gotcha. These here is going to communicate with the machine and let it know, let it know if it has enough pressure and, or if something's failed and it should alarm your machine up. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Eric, why don't you uh, help me understand the next step here after we've hooked up the uh, the gray cable into the control panel of the machine, what do we got to do next? Okay, first of all, take the cover off so you can see if the breaker is actually on. When I Usually when I ship them, it is on. It could be off, but I like to make sure the power is off before I start playing around. This okay. way you don't trip nothing out. So we got a breaker in here, we got a couple relays, and we got a power source or a power supply. Okay. So my next step will will be or will be hook up my my pressure sensors. So you got two wire leads, one yep. for each pressure sensor. Yes, and they're in their mark. This is pressure se sensor one, and this is pe pressure sensor two. So basically, pallet one, pallet two. Yep. Right. So number one for me is always on the outside. Okay. Just to make it easy. Yep. Consistent. We're gonna hook this these up real quick. Yep. We can hide all the wires later. Okay. Once them are hooked up, I'm gonna take the safety caps off the top of these so the electrical connections didn't get bent or broke. Okay. And then we'll start hooking up the wire uh, wire leads to the directional valve. So. Okay. All right. So we've got the wire leads hooked up to the pressure, and so now you are doing what? Well, first of all, I have them all labeled out. You know, color coded. Everything's color coded in the whole system. But what I want to do right now, because you don't want to hook up, you don't want to turn the power on and have power to both sides that'll burn it out. So okay. I want to, I'm going to turn it on first. Okay. And make sure that the two that go on this side are on or these two are on before I hook it up. This way they're not on the same one. Okay. It's fairly easy to hook up. Just basically plug them in like a plug. Plug them in like a plug. They're, like I said, color coded. So everything runs with one, that type of system. You don't want them too tight either. You can crack the casing. So now you've got your wire leads hooked up to your directional valves. Yes. yes. Okay. So the next step is to actually uh, go see if I have any leaks or fire this thing up uh, M code through the M codes. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's let's go check that out and maybe um, take a shot just of the of the hoses running from the pump to the front of the machine. And then we'll go take a look at the hard plumbing in the front of the machine and the rotary union and how we install that. Okay. This is Todd. This is the guy that does all the grunt work for Eric. Eric gets all the glory, but this is the guy here that really does all the work around here. Just wanted to let you know. Give him some props. All right, why don't you explain to me what we got going on inside the machine here, Eric? Okay, so... On the left side of the machine here, yep. um, everything's, like I said, everything's color coded out. So the yellow and green lines, which will be on your left side standing in the in the operators uh, yep. where you would load the, sta load the machine, so the loading station. Um, so this is your, these are your tank lines. Yep. Rubber comes down into the hard line, hard line goes into the, the rotary union. Yep. Okay. On the, on the right side of the machine. Yep. We have the pressure line. Okay. So this uh, pushes the pressure in and through to 
to your fixture. Okay. Um, so we plumb into the rotary union with this with this gauge block here. Um, okay. And then from there we go on to our our fixtures. Uh, and this gauge block will tell you if you got pressure uh, yes. on the pump. Yep. And what it's set at. Only on the pressure side, not on the return. Return does have pressure. Okay. Um, because this machine is set up for uh, fourth access, that's why we're running a rotary unit. Okay. If it wasn't, we have a whole other system for to come up through the bottom of the table. Gotcha. Um, so for me to test this, I have to go back and, and plug in the air to our, our GX40 pump, which is air over hydraulics. Gotcha. Dual then, acting. Yeah, on the dual acting side. Yep. Yes. Let's go do that. Gonna put your cover back on. Yes, this way if there's any type of little minute hydraulic leak, we're not getting nothing in my in the electronics right now. Or ever. Pretty protected in there. It's a very pretty electrical box you got there. So this is all one package. We call this the uh, the dual solenoid pump package with pressure detection. This particular pump package is for pallet switching machines. We also have a, a single station for non-pallet switching. So we're gonna get the air hooked in here. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna plug the air in. Yep. Very important that uh, when I first fire this up, I just don't spin it to 60 PSI and let this thing to chunk. Let it build some, uh, let it prime itself. Um, okay. I do want to mention though, I do not, I don't re recommend putting holes to screw this this pump down to the top of your unit. Okay. That creates holes. Um, if there, you ever had a leak, you could damage the stuff in it. So I like to chain mine to the top so it can't come off. Okay. I'm gonna leave it low pressure right now just as I wanna go see if there's any leaks because I just installed the system. Okay. I don't see any leaks. Whoever installed this must have known what they were doing. Don't see no leaks either. I like putting my hands on. He knows what he's doing. So I like putting my hands on this stuff. If you okay. can't see it, you might feel it on your fingers. Okay. Everything looks good. All right, so we are gonna test the hydraulics now. So you're gonna M code activate yes. the system? Yes. Clamp it on clamp. Clamp it on clamp on pallet one. On pallet one. So uh -oh. I'm gonna zoom in on the text test fixture and we'll see what we got here. So I just unclamped it. All right. So that is working. So we got some cylinders and some pistons here. Yeah. Go ahead and do it one more time. So I clamped, yep. now I've clamped it. Yep. The gauge looks like we're running right now at a thousand pounds. And now that this side is clamped, I want to check to make sure I have no leaks on this side. Okay. When I checked before, it was only on the tank line. Right. So now we're going to start checking these. Okay. This is pallet one, so it's only the blue I got to check right now. Okay. Which is on the other side in the machine. Okay. So no leaks. All right. So now I will move on to uh, pallet, pallet two. two. Gotcha. We got a tech test fixture on pallet two as well. Oh, you're clamping pallet too? Yes. Oh, so I should be. I thought you were going to stay over there. there. Oh, yes. I thought you were going to yes. swing the table. <laughs> all right. I will. Uh, I can spin it around if you want. No, that's all right. 
All right, give it a go. That is, that it's working. Clamping. Yep, that's unclamped. Clamp. There's clamp. Yep. You We're looking have, good. You should have roughly a thousand pounds in there, or close to. Yep. Well, I'll, you check these. The red line for uh, leaks. I have no leaks up here. No leaks in the front. This is good. Everything looks good. Let's check the pressure gauge and see how much is on on our pressure uh, sensors on the pump. And then we'll turn it off. Okay. So you're setting the pump for 2,500 pounds, roughly? Uh, a little over right now. 26, something like that. Yeah, yep. All right, so um, let's go clamp and unclamp a couple times and just make sure it's all working. Okay. So we got pallet two is clamped right now, so go ahead and unclamp. All right, so we are unclamped. Uh, pressure went down to zero, go ahead and clamp. So we're back up to 26 roughly. So it looks like everything's working on pallet two fine. All right, so there you have it. We've got the pump installed uh, with our electrical package. Uh, the pump has basically two directional valves, two pressure detection devices, one for each pallet. Uh, it's all wired into the panel. The M codes are working. Good job, Eric. Thanks. Well done. The manufacturing team will be happy on Monday when they come in and their machine's all ready to go. So, see you next time. Thank you.